that when price is 220, when price is 220, quantity demanded is 40. Q is 40. And then when P, when P uh, increases to 240, 240, then Q, they have told us Q will be 30 units, 30 units. And then they want us number one to give them the quantity, which in this case here must be sold for us to maximize profit, for us to maximize profit. September 2015, quantitative analysis, section four, section four, section four question. So if you got this kind of a question, George, in an exam, how would have you tackled this question? I'm on afraid so I'm struggling with, with the network on my side. Eh? On your side, ah, sorry, okay. If it's network, it has to be on your side, as we have a very stable network, very stable network. Yeah, it's on my side. I'm trying on, on the side. Yeah. We shall overcome, right? Okay. Yes, 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 yes. How about uh, how about this friend of mine? I want to see their names. I want to, uh, Joseph Karaoke, yes. Joseph Karaoke, this kind of uh, a question, uh, how will you begin tackling it? I think if I remember, I think if I remember well, uh, when you, are, oh, you, you haven't you watched, you are, you haven't watched your, your, your calculus uh, videos, right? Remember we have put all these things for you on that website. Mine, when I, whenever I come for such a, a live class, mine basically should uh, be to come here to encourage you because you have the entire syllabus in that website, the entire syllabus in that website. However, ladies and gentlemen, in this question, the first thing that I will do, you see, for me to be able to get profit, ladies and gentlemen, how do we get profit? To get profit, ladies and gentlemen, to get profit, ladies and gentlemen, we normally talk of a total revenue minus total what? Cost. So right away, I know that total cost can only be obtained from marginal what? Cost. I'm repeating again, and I hope you're writing this as I put it down, as I say it, the total cost in this regard can only be obtained from marginal cost. Marginal cost, marginal cost. So ladies and gentlemen, if you are given marginal cost, how do you change it to total cost? If you're given marginal cost, how do you change marginal cost to total cost? By summing up the marginal costs. Marginal costs are minute costs, those little tiny costs, which at the end of the day, if you need to make them a stem, if you need to make them total cost, you can only sum them up. You can only sum them up. So this is an elongated S. The symbol that you're seeing is an elongated S, meaning what here? It is the symbol of what here? Integration. So I want to see whether Paris will be able to remember the integration formula. Yes, and mute Paris. Paris, are you able to remember the integration formula? Yes. Yeah. Aha, uh -huh. please try to remind us eh? how do we go about it? If you're told here to integrate AX raised to N. AX raised to N. Uh is equals to ax uh -huh. to the power of n plus one. Very good. Uh -huh. uh, over n plus one. Over n plus one. Is that everything? Plus k. Plus k. K must always be there. If you forget k, then automatically you've lost it. You've lost it. K is the constant of inter integration. What Paris is telling us what Paris is telling us, and by the way, Eva, this month was uh, quite, uh, it's a good point. I would have bought Paris a, a present, eh? Yeah, I would have bought Paris a present. That's quite a, a good, a good, a good answer. So in this case here, if you're told here to integrate AX raised to N with respect to DX, the rule is very clear. You simply come and increase 
the power by one, you increase the power by one, and then you divide by the new power plus what K Paris has told us, which is K, like that. So that if you're told here to integrate, for example, seven X raised to power six, seven X raised to power six, Mr. George, seven X raised to power six, this will be seven X raised to a new power. How do we get the new power? We take the old power plus one. Old power is six plus one, that gives us seven, all over seven, plus in this case here, the constant of integration. So at the end of the day, these seven and seven will cancel out, giving us X raised to seven plus what here? Plus K. So what have we said? They want us to integrate the marginal cost. So could you kindly help me integrate this marginal cost of 40 Q minus two Q squared plus two Q plus two, I mean. So how do we integrate this? Or rather after we integrate it, how is it going to look like Mr. Joseph? 40Q, it doesn't matter how many terms we have, we're going to integrate one term at a time. Yes, Joseph, try this, how will this look like? That will, that will be 20Q 20, 20 raised to power three. Okay, I like how Joseph has really taken us quite a step ahead. What he's saying is that uh, this will be 40Q, there's a raised to power one here, which is implied. So when I increase this one here by one, then I'll end up getting 40Q what here? squared. And then don't forget to divide by the new power, which is two. That is why you heard Joseph talking of 20 because he went ahead and canceled this. 40 divided by two is 20. Minus, look at this, this will be two Q raised to power three. Two Q raised to power three. Where have I gotten raised to power three from, from here? Two raised to power one, or rather two plus one. The power plus one is three divided by the new power, which is three. And then of course, plus, uh, what happens to this constant? If it was differentiation, if it was differentiation, we know that uh, under differentiation, constants always disappear. Under differentiation, constants always disappear. But in integration, there is nothing that disappears. Actually, in integration, we are even adding new terms. And that is why under integration, we are told that whenever you see a constant like this, this constant, will always uh, take up the variable of the question. The variable here is Q. So whenever you see a constant, simply come and uh, plug in the variable there K, or rather Q. Plus, after I've finished integrating all these terms, I'll not forget in this case here my K. So if that is the case, ladies and gentlemen, then at the end of the day, I will come and uh, have this 40 over two, that is 20 Q squared, minus two over three, Q raised to power three, plus two Q, plus my K. K in terms of cost, K in terms of cost, K will be fixed cost. And the fixed cost has been given by the examiner here as what here, as five. This is a very important formula for me. This is a very important formula for me, which I should come and save somewhere here. The total cost is 20 Q squared, minus two over three Q raised to power three, plus two Q plus five like that, plus five. That is total cost, total cost, total cost. Any question, ladies and gentlemen, regarding what we have just done? Remember a quick reminder is for us to remember the marginal analysis, that whenever you're given marginal cost and you want to get total cost, what do you do to your marginal cost? You integrate the marginal cost. You integrate the marginal cost. You sum them up. The same case here with revenue. If you give me marginal revenue to get total revenue, what I will do is to integrate the marginals. So anytime they want, they've given you marginals and then they want you to work backwards to the stem. Always remember that there is an integration process that has to be followed, that has to be followed. So if that is okay, ladies and gentlemen, then what we need to do is to come straight away here and look at uh, the total revenue. Now let us get the total revenue. Let's get the total revenue. That is quite important for me, the total revenue. Because for us to get, ladies and gentlemen, our profit, we are saying it is total revenue minus total cost. Total cost, already I have that somewhere in my pocket. <laughs> 